Thank you for opening our link to reveal the results of your germination test. This short clip will explain what we found on our client seed samples and how we report the data on the report of seed analysis. As we take you through the steps that are involved in a germination test, you will note that all samples are tested in accordance with the protocols set out in the methods and procedures by the Canadian Food Inspection Agency. The official germination test is conducted in an accredited laboratory and it is the first fundamental step needed for establishing basic seed quality. Canadian germination requires testing of 200 seeds in ideal conditions in the growth chamber to ensure optimal germination as there is no stress imposed on the seed. All variables such as light, moisture and temperature are strictly controlled to ensure the only variable is the seed itself. The report of seed analysis states the percentage of normal seedlings that are capable of developing into healthy plants in the field. Also abnormal seedlings that have one or more damaged or missing structures are counted. Also because dead and fresh seeds often have similar symptoms externally, they need to be assessed by cutting them in half with a scalpel to see if the embryo is viable. Diseases are often observed in the germination test and infection can severely impact quality. Seedborne pathogens can cause a host of problems with germination, vigor and seedling health, which can, in turn, impact stand establishment and ultimately yield potential. The pathogens that we typically find are grouped accordingly. Fungi such as Fusarium species and Cochleobulus sativus are seed rots and seedling blights. They often cause the death of seeds or of seedlings before or shortly after emergence. And they can also be grouped into foot and root rots too. So depending upon when the pathogen affects the seedlings, Fusarium species and Cochleobulus sativus, although present, may not impact the seed to the point of death. The seedling may survive this stage and might die later, or ripen prematurely, producing fewer heads, which results in reduced seed set and or shriveled seed. In this case, seed treatment would certainly be useful. Leaf blights, for example, such as septoria species, can cause severe spotting on leaves and glooms, resulting in reduced seed set and shriveled seeds too. Head blights, there are three of these particular species, Fusarium avonaceum, Fusarium culmorum, and especially Fusarium graminiarum, causing significant yield loss. These species also produce mycotoxins, that can be harmful to certain livestock and humans. Other species of Fusarium are also associated with head blight as well as foot and root rots. The normal seedlings in proximity to infected seedlings may be impacted by the disease, resulting in weak seedlings. Once we determine that Fusarium graminiarum is potentially present, we send the sample for further disease testing in our pathology laboratory. Our disease diagnosticians can determine the percentage of infection. There are a number of in-house seed treatment options which are available at our client's request. We invite you to please refer to our tech bulletins on our website for further information. And thank you for watching.